7 Tips to Fix High Sugar in the Morning How to Lower Fasting Glucose You go to sleep with normal blood sugar. You don't eat anything during the night, but you wake up with high blood sugar. Why does this happen, and how can it be fixed? That's the topic of today's video. I'll give you 7 tips, 7 steps that are very effective for controlling high glucose levels in the morning. But what is high glucose in the morning? For non-diabetics, glucose levels up to 99 are considered ideal. If you do a fasting blood sugar test in a lab, the normal range is between 70 and 99. Less than 70 is too low, which is called hypoglycemia, and up to 99 is the normal limit. So for non-diabetics, a normal glucose level is up to 99. If you are diabetic and are undergoing treatment, taking medications such as metformin, glibenclamide, or insulin, we tolerate values up to 130. So up to 130 would be a good value for those who are already being treated for diabetes. Anything higher than that is already an altered blood glucose because we know that just by having a fasting blood sugar of 110 or more, it is an isolated factor, a risk factor for cardiovascular diseases such as heart attack or stroke. It's very important to pay attention to your blood sugar first thing in the morning even if it stays normal during the day. I'm going to draw attention to this because many people have altered fasting glucose and have a glycated hemoglobin, which is the average blood sugar over the last 90 days. Glycated hemoglobin is pretty good, so you can rest assured, but in fact, fasting glucose, blood sugar in the morning by itself, is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And why is that? It's very curious. You go without eating anything during the night and wake up with high blood sugar. I'll explain a few reasons in this video. The first is because the liver may be producing sugar in an increased way. The liver also has this function, even to regulate blood sugar levels. Sometimes you go a few hours, or some people go days without eating, and the liver can produce sugar. That's the first issue here. Hepatic glucose production, liver production. Another issue is because at dawn, our body naturally, physiologically produces some hormones like cortisol, also known as the stress hormone or awakening hormone. I prefer this second name to keep our bodies going. So it's normal to have slightly higher cortisol in the morning. And as the day goes on, as the hours pass by, this cortisol decreases. That's normal. In the morning, adrenaline is also increased, and adrenaline, like cortisol, can raise blood sugar levels. Other hormones, like the growth hormone, which not only children have, but the elderly and adults also have it. It also has the ability to raise blood sugar more, and naturally, it's a little higher in the morning, just like glucagon, which is the more difficult name. Glucagon is another hormone, just to explain to you here, that also has this function of raising blood sugar. So in the morning, during the waking period, this happens physiologically. If you have any problem with this issue of blood sugar regulation or insulin resistance, because the main hormone that lowers blood sugar levels is insulin, if insulin is resistant, what does that mean? Your body even produces insulin, but that insulin cannot take the sugar from the blood and put it into the cells, into the tissues, because your body is resistant. So type 2 diabetes is not the kind where you do not have insulin production. No, many times you even have increased insulin production, but this insulin cannot work. This insulin resistance mechanism is present in type 2 diabetes which is the most frequent type of diabetes. There's also another cause, which increases blood sugar a lot in the morning, which I will explain later in the tips for you to understand better. So what are these seven tips? Before starting the tips, you ask me to make a goal of likes. So 7,000 likes, if I reach that goal, I'll make more videos about diabetes or whatever topic you want. But let's get to the tips. There are seven of them. First, avoid fatty foods at supper, at your last meal. Why? For example, a pizza. When you eat a pizza, what happens to your blood sugar levels? Soon after, as it has a lot of fat, it will not increase as much. And you're going to get that false idea. So avoid foods that are fatty, even if they have good fats, like avocados or olive oil. Avoid them right before bed if you're having this problem of high blood sugar in the morning. Why? Your body will slow down the absorption of fats a little bit. It won't cause that insulin spike right after. But in the morning, you may have a little higher glucose level than normal. So it's very important to avoid fatty foods. 
I talked here about good fats, but bad fats are even worse, like bacon, cheddar cheese, and sausage, which have a lot of saturated fat. This type of food should be eliminated from your entire menu, but especially at night, so you don't wake up with high blood sugar in the morning. So you're asking, well, if I can eat fats for dinner, what can I eat? I'll give you an example here, an apple, and I really like eating an orange before sleep, always with the pulp because it has fiber. Guava is another good food, or a little soup. I don't drink much liquid because I frequently wake up to urinate, so soup isn't enough for me. I don't know if that's your case. If so, you can write in the comments. But I always prefer sleeping after eating something solid like an orange, usually an orange or guava. I stick to these fruits because they give me a good feeling of fullness. They have fiber and I can wake up feeling ready, okay? So, avoid fatty food during the night. The second tip, you have already seen that. I explained about hormones, cortisol increase, glucagon increase, growth hormone. How are you going to improve that? You have to have a routine, you have to have a time to sleep and a time to wake up, because that way, your body understands what part of the day it is. From the point of view, metabolic hormonal, that's key. So those who are taking care of their blood sugar levels in the morning, need to have a routine and most people don't this point here is often neglected many people don't do this end up addressing other issues like fatty foods they might not eat sugar at night but i won't talk about not eating sugar here because this tip you already know but many people take care of this but forget about the routine of having a fixed routine, having a set time to sleep and a set time to wake up. Also, the hours of sleep, at least six hours of sleep, are going to help you not to wake up with sugar too high in the morning, okay? So you need to establish a routine for your body to understand. If one day you wake up at 6 a.m., another day you wake up at 10, for example, or at 11, you wake up for lunch. How can your body understand what part of the day it is? It can't. So you need a set schedule, not that one day or another you go to a party, have to sleep for 11 hours. No, you can sleep a little later, but that can't be your routine. It can't be the most frequent. The most frequent should be a set time to sleep and a set time to wake up. This will do you a lot of good. There was a study that observed people who didn't have routine, and these people were more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Also people who alternated. One day they would stay awake at night, then they would sleep during the day. This on a metabolic level is not my opinion. They are studies that prove this is bad for your metabolism. So it's vital that your body understands what part of the day it is. Number three, and this tip here I also do, is do an activity before bed to avoid stress. For example, listen to a piano or meditate. I'm even going to suggest a piano song for you here. It's actually an artist named Ludovico Einaldi. You can listen, listen to Una Mattina. These are songs that will help you with this stress issue. There are also people who like the violin, saxophone, which you like more. I prefer the piano. Then listen to Ludovico Einaldi and tell me what you think. Comment on the next video, then I'll know you follow this advice. Because managing stress right before bed also aids in sleep, reducing adrenaline levels, for instance. And when you sleep better, you can better regulate your blood sugar levels. This is an extremely crucial point. All right, number four. Number four is physical exercise. Not right before bedtime, though. It can be evening time if you prefer, but any time of the day. It's vital for you to engage in physical activity because your muscles can take the sugar in your blood and store it. They can utilize the sugar in your blood, the glucose. This significantly lowers your blood glucose, your blood sugar levels. So exercise at least 150 minutes a week, broken down into three or more sessions. So 50 minutes three times a week, preferably for the matter of blood sugar. Do resistance exercises like gym workouts, swimming, or exercises with resistance bands. If you can't do weight training, for example, that would already be a good start. It's worth adding this because increasing muscle mass is a very efficient way to control morning blood sugar levels. It's worth it for you to exercise. What type of exercise do you do? Do exercises that you enjoy. 
I'm very fond of running and also weight training. I engage in physical activity six times a week, one hour each. Six hours a week. Is that okay? Do I have to increase it? I think it's good, right? Shall we continue? Tip number five is about eating fiber-rich foods at night. What do fibers do? Fibers, apart from improving your digestion and reducing the risk of bowel cancer, colorectal cancer, for example, fibers also increase your satiety. You will eat less, and they have the potential to lower the glycemic index of foods. But what is that? The glycemic index is how much a food will raise your blood sugar. And if they go down, they help with your glycemic control, your blood sugar control. So, what are fibers? In a simple way, for example, at dinner or supper, add a bit of chia, add a bit of flaxseed. When I say a bit of chia, what does that mean? Or for example, when I eat a low-fat yogurt, I add a tablespoon of chia. A small measure will make a big difference, along with other benefits. Chia also has many benefits. I've already made a video just about it. But I wanted to draw attention to this blood sugar issue early in the morning. Then add fiber or food, like the case with oranges with pulp, which I mentioned because it has fiber naturally. It's worth looking into this fiber issue. Do you eat a lot of fiber? Are you eating fiber at night for supper? So you have to pay attention to this. And tip number six. Do you remember when I explained what can greatly increase blood sugar levels? And I also said I was going to explain the third cause, didn't I? So the third cause is our tip number six, which is about hypoglycemia, when sugar gets too low in the blood. Wait, but why can this increase blood sugar levels? When you have hypoglycemia in the middle of the night, often you don't even wake up. Your blood sugar is low, or you wake up sweating, that cold sweat, shivering. Well. When this happens, our body, in trying to compensate in a rebound way, ends up significantly increasing some hormones, those hormones that I explained. And you, when you wake up, you wake up with high blood sugar levels. So you need to evaluate, if you are following all these tips, how are your blood sugar levels in the early morning? If you don't wake up, it's worth it to at least wake up once, check it, and test it with a glucometer. If you're having this problem of very high sugar in the morning, because sometimes this is your problem, you are having hypoglycemia. And in the morning, you have a rebound because of these hypoglycemias. Some people who have diabetes, who use medications or insulin, should do this. It's a common cause of elevated sugar in the morning. Did you know that? That hypoglycemia can cause hyperglycemia in the morning. Can very low sugar cause very high sugar? Because of this rebound mechanism that I explained, if you didn't know, it's already worth subscribing to the channel. So click subscribe and turn on notifications because here you'll get more tips like this. And why is it important? Because sometimes knowing this, you can alert the doctor and they can adjust your medications, for example. It's easier to understand how your body works if you identify that you're having hypoglycemia in the middle of the night. Often this is the case. It's happened over and over again with my patients. So I end up explaining this and asking for this test in the middle of the night. I know it's not pleasant to wake up to get tested. I'm not saying that, but it's better to correct it, get well, and not have the complications of diabetes than to keep waking up with increased blood sugar levels. And the seventh tip, if you've done all of these and it still hasn't helped, is weight control. Why? Fatty tissue ends up hindering the action of insulin, as I explained. And weight control is also a very efficient measure to reduce this increased fasting glucose. There was a study that saw people who had lost 5% of their weight already showed a significant improvement in their blood sugar levels in the morning fasting. So it's critical to also consider the issue of weight. On a scale of 0 to 10, what rating would you give this video? If it's a 10, I'll create more videos like it. Also, mention in the comments which region of the world you're from, which city. I want to know where this video is reaching. I'm referring to Porto Alegre. I'll recommend a video for you to watch now. It's a video where I discuss foods that don't raise blood sugar levels. How interesting. Are you a diabetic or are you simply taking care of your health and want to learn which foods that don't raise blood sugar levels too much are beneficial for diabetics? I address that in this video. I'll also go into further detail about diabetes. Hugs. See you soon.